Good morning and welcome to Pebble Creek Community Church on this glorious Sunday morning. We are so glad that you've chosen to worship with us today. As you can see, we are in the Eagle's Nest Ballroom, putting the final touches on preparing for our live services starting next Sunday, June the 6th. We look forward to seeing you here. I want to welcome all the visitors to our web service. We are so glad that you've chosen to join with us this morning, and we hope that you are drawn into the presence of Almighty God and experience his peace and grace and life-changing love during our worship service today. And we invite you to join us every week on the web, or you can start next week and be with us here live in the Eagle's Nest Ballroom. Please feel free to reach out to Pastor Bob with your questions and comments, or just to introduce yourself. He always enjoys hearing from so many of you watching our services. You can use the Contact Us tab on the website toolbar to contact the pastor and give your feedback. This is the weekend when we commemorate the men and women who have died in service to our country. On this Memorial Day weekend, or as some of us remember it as Decoration Day because we decorated graves over this weekend, please take time to remember those who lost their lives and could not come home to their families so that we can have the luxuries and freedoms that we enjoy today. As Jesus says in John 15, 13, greater love has no man than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. May we never forget the cost and loss of human life to have our freedom. Attention everyone in Ropes and Reserve. I want to remind you one more time that we have added a new web page to our uh, web, web page to our website for Ropes and Reserve, and it's under our outreach tab. There's also an article about it under what's happening. This will give you detailed information about Bible studies, worship services, and other opportunities offered by Pebble Creek Community Church that are available on site at the Ropes and Reserve facility. Ropes and residents and Pebble Creek Community Church and attenders are all welcome to attend. God's word tells us to pray and let our requests be made known to him. And there are many needs in our lives and in the world, and we are here to support you with a group of prayer warriors, or you can keep your needs private for the pastor only. Just go to the tab on the homepage titled Prayer Request to submit yours. If for the pastor only, please add that at the beginning of the prayer request, and it will be sent directly to him instead of the prayer team. Be sure to listen to the one and a half minute devotionals, Words of Hope with Pastor Bob, which are available every Tuesday and Thursday on our website as an encouragement and support to build your faith. Since we don't have an actual offering time during our web services, it is important to take a minute and reflect on giving back a portion of God's blessings to support the church and the Lord's work. Details on how you can give your tithes and offerings are listed on the homepage tabs under giving and under announcements. One last announcement. Next week is the first Sunday in June, so we will be celebrating corporate communion together when we will meet live right here in the Eagle's Nest Ballroom. Please plan to join us for worship and to participate in the Lord's Supper next week. Now as we move into the worship part of our service, please quiet your hearts and minds from the distractions of the world and prepare to worship our Lord as Donna plays the prelude, Eternal Father, Strong to Save.
Good morning, brothers and sisters, on this Memorial Day weekend. We start our singing on this special service by joining together and singing My Country Tis of Thee. Please sing with me. The scripture today is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today, so that you may live and increase, and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these forty years, to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to him and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines, and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey a land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron, and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day, otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock he gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. 
but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods, and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Like the nations the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Hmm? Now we continue in worship as we join together singing, O oh God, our help in ages past. Let's remember, especially on this Memorial Weekend, how our God has been faithful. I want to welcome you this morning. Thank you so much for being part of our broadcast on this wonderful Memorial Day Sunday. I know Memorial Day is actually tomorrow, but we just want to thank you for being part of this. And I do want you to take a few moments today. And if you know someone who's a veteran or you know a family that has paid the ultimate sacrifice with someone who died in, the, in service to our country or has passed away since then, this is our time to honor you because as the songs often say, freedom, folks, is just not free. Someone paid the price and that is so true for our spiritual lives as well. Jesus paid the price on the cross for our spiritual freedom. So think of that today as, as Memorial Day is tomorrow and you're having your cookouts and all the time that you have with your family. Enjoy that, but also take a moment to thank those who we're willing to go and fight and give us this freedom that we have in our country. I want to take some time during our worship service now to go to prayer. We're going to pray for several people. If you hear someone that you don't know or have not heard of that prayer request, please take a moment, write that down. You can even back up the video, I don't mind. Back it up and be able to write down that worship uh, time and that prayer request that has been made. But let's go to the Lord in prayer now and we'll pray for those who are certainly in need of God's help. Father, we want to thank you for bringing us here today, bringing us into this place in this time. Lord, as we quiet our minds and hearts, we know that it is your spirit that dwells among us. It is your spirit that moves through us. So Father, we are so thankful and we pay tribute to those who have given their lives that we might have this freedom for ourselves this morning. Lord, I think this morning of, of many people who are in need of prayer, I think of Roberta Thompson, Raymond and Joe Scalzo, for Jeff and Eden Harrison, Lord, for the Soper's daughter, Kim, for Michael and Patricia. Lord, we think of all of these people, for Ray and Beth Hatton, 
Lord, we just pray that you would bless them, guide them, give them wisdom to know what to do as far as their treatment and listen to their doctors. Lord, may they have wisdom as well for Inga, for Barb and Lauren Cahal, for Butch and Ruth and Paul Alex, for Bob and Carol Fives and Jackie Atman, for Lee Ayers. Lord, we pray for these folks that they would be able to be uh, restored to their families, that they would be healed and be able to share together, uh, especially in this weekend, Lord, that they might be able to be there for them. For Peggy's mom, Audrey, this morning as she battles health issues, Lord, we just pray for her, for Phyllis and Ro Ross of Live who were in a car accident. We just pray for them as well. And for Leo Fallon, Lord, those who one of those who comes to us through ropes and reserve, and we know he's having a throat procedure this week. Father, we just ask that all of these folks would be held in your kind and gracious hands. May you become the great physician to these people. May they know that you are with them and around them. Lord, for our missionaries today, we just pray that you would bless them, guide them, direct them, give them creativity beyond even what they thought. May they find new and different ways to reach the people around them. For our first responders, Lord, for our doctors, our nurses, our emergency medical teams, our, our police officers, and our military. Lord, it is these people who protect our freedoms. It is these people who protect our health and our lives. Lord, I ask a special blessing on them this weekend, that they might be ones who know that you surround them, that you lift them up, that you hold them in your hand. And Father, for our country, Lord, this is just something we pray about so earnestly. Lord, may we be reminded, as, as we know in Chronicles, that it says, if your people, if my people, you say, would seek your face and turn from our own wicked ways. Then you will hear and then you will lift our country up again. Lord, we just pray that you would bless our country, bless our leaders. May they know that their wisdom should come from you, that the leadership must come from you. Bless this time that we have together now, Lord. May we set aside the distractions of the coming week and the coming days to zero in and focus in on your word and your Holy Spirit. May we all be taught today. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a video for you. A uh, little different since it is Memorial Day. We have a Memorial Day tribute. We're going to play taps at the end of that. I hope it's so meaningful. I hope it touches your heart and reminds you what it takes to live in a free country. So this is our Memorial Day tribute.
Today we're going to be talking about Memorial Day. Memorial Day. A day to remember. Well, what do we need to remember? We just read from Deuteronomy chapter 8, but we're going to talk about remembering that freedom did not come without a price. Uh, you know, there's an old Toby Keith song. I'm a fantastic country music fan. And there's an old Toby Keith song called American Soldier. And in there, he has a line that says, we need to remember that freedom did not come free. And that's what we need to look at today, is the idea that freedom did, did not come without a price. There are soldiers around the world that are buried in graves because they gave the ultimate sacrifice, and we so appreciate that. We want to let their families know how much we appreciate that. But they're, they're there because they fought for freedom. Well, spiritual freedom cost as well. And we need to remember that because freedom did not come without a price, we need to remember those that made the ultimate sacrifice. We need to remember all those we love that are no longer with us. It's a day of remembering. Remembering can be wonderful. It can be great. Think of the heroism that came from remembering. I, I have watched often World War II and some of those uh, newsreels, the old newsreels, and they would show all the things that were going on and the heroism of those men and women in that day. Wow, it just moves me. The fact that they would give their lives, many of them knowing they were not coming back. We need to remember because it's wonderful with the nostalgia of family holidays. How many people listening this morning, do you have things that your family, in your mind, always does? Oh, we always do that for Christmas, Easter, Memorial Day, 4th of July. It's nostalgia. It's that thing that brings us the warm and fuzzies, if you will. We need to remember great accomplishments in life. We need to remember simple pleasures that made us smile. You know, when your kids are little, uh, you need to remember those things. I know just recently my granddaughter, who's going to be three in July, we were FaceTiming, or, or I should say they, they sent me a video, that was what it was, and it was my granddaughter singing the B-I-B-L-E. That was just so neat for me to listen to her do that. Well, it was just a simple pleasure, and it made me smile. Deuteronomy chapter 8 teaches us to also remember what got us to this point. What did it take for us to get from not believing to believing? Also, what we should continue to focus on. I want us to look this morning at three remembrances from Deuteronomy chapter 8 that are still good for our country and for us personally. Point number one. Point number one. We need to remember the leading of the Lord. Let me repeat that. We need to remember the leading of the Lord. Israel is listening to Moses at virtually the same spot where they were with him 40 years prior to that. Did you realize that? When Moses is speaking in Deuteronomy chapter 8, they are at virtually the same spot where the spies came back and the ten spies said, Oh man, are you crazy? We can't do this. And the two spies, Joshua and Caleb, said, Come on, we got this. And it was 40 years from that point that they turned around and wandered in the wilderness. They doubted the Lord's leading and ended up wandering for 40 days. To give you a little example, when you come out of the Red Sea, when they came out of Egypt through the Red Sea, technically they took a left. And they went to the land of Canaan. That was a seven day hike. Seven days. They take a left, seven days, they're in Canaan, promised land, it's all over. God said, take a right. And they ended up wandering around and around and around for 40 years. 
What was the point of all of that wandering? Think about that now. What was the point of all of that wandering? I think in verse 2, if you look at verse 2, it says this. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness those 40 years. Ah, here it is. Listen. To humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. I have had that question asked of me over and over. Why did God make them wander? To humble them and to test them. That was it. Sometimes we need to remember that God does not just lead us in happy times. God leads us all the time. And what I mean by that is this. God leads you whether you're in Grace circumstances, happy circumstances, man, won the lottery circumstances, and sometimes he leads you through the valley of death. Just like the psalm says. You see, oh, God only leads me if it's good. No, no, no. God leads you all the time. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not. And here, God let the children of Israel wander for 40 years to help mature them. Now, I like like the King James here. I don't usually use that. It's a great version if you like that. It's a little bit older for me. But Deuteronomy 8.2 says in the King James to remember all the way. (laughs) Believe me, those Israelites remembered all the way for 40 years. They wandered and wandered and wandered until all of their relatives... Everybody over the age of 20 died. That was it. And in what ways did he lead them? He said, remember all the way. What ways? Well, he let them go hungry sometimes. And then he fed them miraculously. He had manna. And I've said before, the Israelites saw all this white stuff on the ground, and the word... Why we call it manna is that's the Hebrew word. The Israelites went up and went, manna. What does it mean? It means what is it? So they called it, what is it, for 40 years. But he fed them. And then they said, oh, that's not enough. So what did he do? He brought in a bunch of birds. They had chicken dinner every night. For 40 years. Their clothes didn't wear out for 40 years. Could have gone out of style, I guess, but at least they didn't wear out. But here's my point. Sometimes God allows us to do with less to teach us who is really leading us. Our country certainly has had difficult times, but I believe that God has always led us to better things. But he's led us to better things when we turned back to the Lord. When we humbled ourselves. When we decided to submit to the leading of the Lord, God said, okay, you get it. Let's move on. It is the Lord who does the leading. And we need to remember that. We need to remember the leading of the Lord. Second point this morning is this. Remember the chastening of the Lord. In verse 5 it says this, Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to Him and revering Him. (laughs) Most of us would rather not remember discipline, wouldn't we? Oh, Lord, I can't wait for God to discipline me. I don't know anybody that says that. I certainly don't. I don't pray for patience either, because God will send me things that will help me with my patience. I just say, Lord, help me to learn along the way. Why? Because we need to remember the chastening of the Lord. Most of us think of discipline in 
only one way, and that's this. Discipline is negative. I did something bad, therefore I was disciplined. Isn't that right? That's how we think of it. Discipline and punishment are the same. I will tell you this this morning, though, people, friends. Discipline and punishment are not the same. They're just not. And we're going to look at that. The Bible says much about this, and it goes much further with the concept of discipline. Look at Proverbs 22.6. It says, direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. This is the concept of discipline. It's the same concept, but he says, direct. I will direct your children, or you should direct your children onto the right path. That means training, mentoring, not punishment, not the stick in the carrot. This is training, positive, moving forward. I'm not saying that, you know, everything is positive reinforcement. Sometimes God corrects us too. But that's not the only concept. And Proverbs teaches us that this is training and mentoring. Look at Hebrews chapter 12. Here's another one. Starting in verse 5, it says, And have you completely forgotten his word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship, then, as discipline. God is treating you as his children, for what children are not disciplined by their father. Same concept, discipline. Think of this. When your children were little, and you said, Johnny, Susie, Mary, Billy, whatever their names might be, Johnny, don't do that. Johnny does it anyway. What'd you do? <laughs> I know what my parents did. That was a, I didn't get three strikes. I got one strike and it was done. Because the next time around, my mom would tell me, you got one choice, do it or find a place to be and you sit to the side because you're going to do what I tell you to do. That was the deal. But here in Hebrews, it's both discipline and punishment. My mom wanted me to learn something. But if I didn't, punishment was on the way. It involves both correction and direction. You see, God doesn't just punish us. That would not be the point. The point is we need to learn what to do as much as what not to do. For Israel, the discipline cost them 40 years. 40 years Israel wandered around when they could have been enjoying the Canaan land. The land that God said flowed with milk and honey. God said, I want you to go there now. And Israel said, no thanks. We'll go out in the desert. Now, fortunately, we live in the desert, so we know what that means. Would you like to live in your house here in Pebble Creek, or would you like to go set up a tent someplace out in the desert? Not a hard choice, is it? But Israel made the other choice, because they wouldn't follow the Lord's discipline. God knew that generation would not learn. They had doubts the first time that they would not return over to the, and they would not turn over to the Lord. They had doubts and they said, I'm sorry, you're not big enough to do this. Because they would not trust God, they had to be disciplined. That was just how it was. We need to remember as well, such as comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves and he chastens everyone he accepts as a son. If we are disciplined it shows that we are loved. Let's go back to your children's example. What does it say to Johnny? Johnny, don't do that. Does it anyway. You do nothing. It tells Johnny he can do whatever he wants. You don't care. That's the unspoken thing. Yes, he can do anything he wants. 
more importantly, you don't care. Hebrews tells us with God, if we are disciplined, it shows that we are loved by God. If God did not care, He'd let us do whatever we wanted to. Look at Proverbs 3, starting in, starting in verse 11. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent His rebuke because the Lord disciplines those He loves as a father, the son He delights in. Because God delights in us, He wants us to the, be the best that we can be. And, and lastly in this section right here, Revelation 3, 19 says, Those whom I love I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. We are admonished to respond to correction. We're admonished. Listen, learn from this. This isn't simply because I want to harm you. I want you to learn something. Don't be apathetic. You know, oftentimes I hear this. The opposite of love is hate. The opposite of love is not hate. Because love is a very passionate emotion. Hate is a very passionate emotion. What is the opposite of love? It's apathy. Love says, I love you, I care. I just Apathy says, I don't care. I just don't care. That's the opposite. So you see, we need to remember that God has said, remember my chastening. So what's the purpose of this correction, training, and discipline? We go back to verse 6 of our, of our uh, passage today. It says, observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to Him and revering Him. It is to teach us to obey God's commands. Did you hear that? What's the point of God's discipline? It is to teach us to obey God's commands. So often I hear people say, oh, it's so hard to understand the Bible. I don't know what Bible you're reading. It's not always hard to understand. It's only hard to apply. That's the difference. You see, it's not always hard to understand. That's very pointed. To observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to Him and revering Him. And we learn the truths of 1 Samuel chapter 15, just the two verses, 21 and 22. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder. The best of what was devoted to God. Now this is when Saul captured all of the people uh, in, in his wars. And Samuel is about to come up and tell him something he doesn't want to hear. But I wanted you to hear that verse first. It's all of the stuff they've gathered. You know, all the robes and clothes and sheep and animals. Oh man, they only kept the best. And then verse 22. But Samuel replied. Saul's like, oh, look at all this good stuff I got for God. Verse 22, but Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of God doesn't care about all the peripheral things. He wants your heart first. If He has your heart, then He has everything else about you. There is nothing you're going to withhold if He has your heart. That's why we need to remember the chastening of the Lord. It is not because God doesn't like us. It's because He loves us. Then we have learned the purpose of discipline, that obeying is the best that we can do. He didn't ask us to be successful. He asked us to be obedient. You see the difference? Not that I have to be successful. I need to be obedient. Point number three. Point number three is this. Remember the faithfulness of the Lord. Remember the faithfulness of the Lord. 
Moses tells Israel about the land they are about to enter. In verse 9, the first part of verse 9, he says, it's a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing. So it's plenty of food and water. Look at the last half of that verse says, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. Uh, iron and copper in that day meant it was a lot of wealth. They were going to be wealthy people. Verse 10, when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. And so Moses admonishes them to be thankful in all of the Lord's faithfulness. I'm reminded that our land here that we live in is the same way. We have a bountiful food supply. We have a higher standard of living. We have unprecedented freedoms that other, other free countries don't even have. We have protection from our enemies. Are we thankful for that? Or do we take it for granted? At various points through our history as a country, we have seen those freedoms threatened, and we have always survived. Be thankful for that? Do you wake up and thank God that you live here? and not somewhere else that might be less free? Will we work to preserve that freedom? There is also the faithfulness of the Lord to us as individuals as well, not just to our country, but to individuals. Faithfulness of the Lord does not mean, though, getting everything I want. I hear that a lot, too, over the many years. I pray to God, I don't know, something facetious along the lines of, I, I pray to God that I'd win the lottery and I didn't. I even told God I'd give him a tenth of everything. You know what I asked him? Do you give a tenth to God right now? Well, you know, it's harder now, but if I won the lottery, I'd do it. Let me tell you something, folks. If you're not doing those things now, you won't do it then either. You just won't. You see, we need to remember the faithfulness of the Lord. Faithfulness in what we need. Faithfulness is in what is best for us. How is the Lord's faithfulness to believers seen? First of all, in the present. If you go to Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 25, I'm not going to read it all, from 20, 25 to 34, it talks about, I will tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? The answer to that is yes. Overwhelmingly yes. God says he will take care of us. At the end of that passage, verse 34, it says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I so encourage you this morning. You plan for the future. You don't worry about the future. Because God says He will take care of you. It's not that He might take care of us. He will take care of us. Romans 12, starting in verse 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. God will eventually hand out the justice deserved. He will protect us. He will take care of us. What about in the future? John chapter 14. God says he will be faithful in the future. He says in verse 1, John chapter 14, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me in my Father's house. There are many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to place a, prepare a place for you? The answer is no. 
If he was not going there to prepare a place for us, he would have said, hey, you're on your own. See ya. But he didn't do that. We need to remember that God is faithful. Faithful now, faithful in the future. There is a special place for us and the Lord is coming to get us. And also, in the future, if you look through that, I'm not going to go to the passages today, but it says throughout the New Testament that we as believers will receive crowns for our faithfulness. In 1 Thessalonians 2, we'll have the crown of rejoicing. In 2 Timothy 4, we'll have the crown of righteousness. In James chapter 1, we'll have the crown of life. And in 1 Peter 5, we have the crown of glory. All of those are ours to gather if we are faithful. It is God alone who is faithful to us. Therefore, we need to be faithful to Him. This is first a call to remember today. A call to remember is not a walk down memory lane. It's not a nostalgic look back at all the things that used to be. Not at all. It is a purposeful remembrance that we can learn from and build on. The events of the past for a better future as a country and as individuals. Listen to that again. A, a purposeful remembrance that we can build on. The events of the past we build on for a better future. Both as a country and as individuals. Then a call for thank, thankfulness. First for all our families. Secondly for our country. And mostly for the Lord's love and care. Let me encourage us this morning, may we always remember and never forget. And I know that's a double something or other. May we always remember and never forget to be ready to serve the Lord of our past, the Lord of our present, and the Lord of our future. May he bring us today a call to remembrance. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you this morning and we know how much you care for us, how you love us, how you watch over us, how you move us, how you care what we do and where we go and the outcomes of those things. Lord, we ask that you'd bless our time as we have heard from your word. With every head bowed and eye closed, if you're sitting in your homes, that's great. But you may be listening to this and you say, I don't remember any of that stuff. I don't remember any of the time that God loved me. I only remember that I feel alone and lonely. I want to encourage you today, this is your time. You can become part of a faith family. You will remember the love of God. You will see it. You will see all of that. Remember everything. Maybe the reason you don't remember is because you've never given your life to Christ. It's hard to remember something you've never had. If you want to receive Jesus as your Savior this morning, Please pray this simple prayer with me. Father, I thank you for, my, for your forgiveness of my sins. Thank you for that. Thank you for becoming my Lord and my Redeemer. Help me to walk that spiritual journey that will honor you in everything that I do. That I will remember that you are leading, that you are directing, that you are correcting, and you are mentoring. Help me to remember that you will be faithful to me both now and and in the future. Until that day when I stand before you and I hear those words, well done, my servant. What great words. If you pray that prayer, go to our website. I want you to contact me. Let me know what you're thinking. I want to talk to you. I want to share with you some things that will help you start your spiritual journey. And Father, as we finish here today, help us to remember 
as believers, those who have walked with you maybe 40 years. Lord, help us to remember that you love us, you care for us, you lead us and you guide us. Help us to remember that each and every day. And we'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for being part of our service this morning. May God bless you. And we'll see you next Sunday right here in the ballroom, live and together. Our closing hymn this morning says in part, Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Our God has given that to our country and gives that to each and every one of us. So let's sing from our hearts as we sing, Great is thy faithfulness. from falling, and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, both now and forevermore. Amen.